future and come up with ideas that we're hoping to get from you in terms of what the park will look like in the future. Um, we're lucky to be here tonight um, courtesy of, the, of a Community Preservation Act grant that the city uh, awarded for uh, the Public Works Department to hire Stephen Stimson Associates, a very talented landscape architecture firm that's here with us tonight to help us with um, gathering design ideas from, from all of you. Um, I'll introduce uh, uh, this is Lauren Stimson from uh, Stimson Associates, and she'll be speaking in a minute. I've got just a couple of other brief words um, relative to tonight. There are, there are a number of people here, probably too many to acknowledge, but we have city councilors here. I think I saw Paul Spector, Marianne Labarge, Ryan O'Donnell, um, and the mayor is here. And Jean Louise is also here. Thank you for that. Um, so thanks, and most importantly, so many of you have turned out, which is terrific. Um, I wanted to acknowledge uh, in the back this evening, we do have um, some special guests that have come all the way from Pakistan to take a look at how the city of Northampton gathers public input on an important project like the Pulaski Park re-envisioning. So that some folks have come a long way and we want to make them welcome as they observe uh, our efforts as a community getting together around the redesign of the park. Um, so uh, this evening, uh, Lauren Stinson, she, she'll be starting with a brief presentation and she has four other architects, landscape architects with her that are going to help us uh, get our ideas together on paper, as you can see. Um, for those of you that aren't sitting around the table, we would highly encourage everybody to grab a seat around the table. It's a really uh, great opportunity to take some markers and pens in a few minutes and get together and start putting your ideas on paper so that we can take a look at those. Thank you. I'm actually going to try to present from the computer standing closer to you, so if you can't hear me, I can figure this out and come back up here. Uh, so my name is Lauren Stimson. I'm a principal at Team Stimson Associates, and these are my two colleagues. This is Sarah Lawrence, Garrett Stone, and Christopher Gino. And we're really excited to be here. just want to thank the CPC and Mr. Mayor and the folks at DPW and Jim and Doug very wonderful to be here six years after we were presenting up the road um, when we won the design competition. How many people were at the competition presentation? Well, that's great. So here we are <laughs> a few years later. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is this is, we're in schematic design, so that's the beginning of the design process, and we're in what we call an analysis or research phase. So we essentially want to get all of your feedback tonight. And we're going to continue to go through this public process for two more meetings after this, uh, through the month of June. And essentially what we're going to do is I'm going to start with a very brief overview of our first impressions of the park, how it exists today, how it came to be, and a very simple site analysis. Um, and then after that, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you if you have any questions or any input at that point. Briefly touch upon the design that we actually did for the competition six years ago. So those of you who weren't there could at least see where we ended up and why we ended up there. And then I'll introduce this um, exercise, which basically is going to be a charrette, which is a design dialogue and a workshop that encourages you to write and to draw on these site plans. So I think, that's, I think that's it. So let's get started. If we can have the lights down, please. <coughs> So, can you hear me? Yes. 
barely. Okay, I'll speak up. So this is an 1853 map of downtown Northampton. Some of you have probably seen this, you're familiar with it. And what I want to just point out is that here is what is to become Boston Park. In 1850, it was open space. It was attractive land. This is the back end of what's to become the church. And the Academy of Music does not exist yet. And essentially, it was open space to begin with. And then along comes some stables, library stables, some activities, some commerce on this site, but still no permanent buildings. 1949, this is the map where we actually start to see the first inkling of, and we know that the park was established in the you know, turn of the century, 1909, 1908, and 1907. And essentially, this is the first drawing that we have, and we're, we're going to look for more, but just a brief overview of how the park came to be. And this style of park, symmetrical, the way that it fronts Main Street, this is Main Street, this is New South Street, here's Craft Avenue. And by now you see the Academy of Music, you see Memorial Hall, here's the Town Hall. Essentially, it reflected the time, and I think the point of this historic research is really just to show that the park had changed. The evolution of the park has changed to eventually 1975, Huntley Associates redesigned the park. Looked very different than the original intent. And I think what we just want to point out is that the park design reflected the time. And this is 2014. And the values of this community may have changed. It's still green space. It's still open space. We know it as it looks now, it's actually a version of this. Here's Main Street, here's New South Street, Academy of Music, Memorial Hall, and this is familiar to you. Here's that expansive you know, paving, two lawn areas in the plaza where the bus stop and the bike parking is. And essentially all we want to point out is the park has changed over time, and what will it become now that it's 2014? So we're flipping views. Here's Main Street now on the bottom of the slide. Here's New South Street. This is the Roundhouse parking lot. There's the Roundhouse, just to orient you. In terms of the context, some things that we want to be aware of and that we know are important. The rail trail, City Hall, all these important civic buildings, the Unitarian Church, Memorial Hall, the Academy of Music, this whole front door that fronts Main Street, this part of the park we know is extremely important. And just a few, a few views for those of you who aren't totally familiar with it, and just to point out some observations that we've had. So this area, when you come off of Main Street, here's a view as if you're crossing the street entering the park. What we really like is that it's got this expansive crosswalk, and it just guides you into the front door. And what we are finding is that once you enter the park, there is this sense of a civic space, a plaza, but it's not an open plaza. It has structures in it. It's got bike parking, it's got bus shelters, and it also has trees. And it's got these street trees, but it also has these understories, these dogwood. And what you can see from this view is sometimes, certain times of year, when the leaves are out, the dogwood sometimes can actually impede the view into the park. That's just something to bring up. We noticed that as we were driving by. You get this wonderful view as you're coming up Main Street, up Route 9, as you turn the corner right before the big crosswalk and you can sort of see into the park from this way. But at times when you're looking straight on or if you're walking down the street even, you can't necessarily see straight in. We really love your environmental initiative here. <laughs> and what's, what's kind of interesting is Northampton is probably one of the greenest, most sustainable, you know, environmental ethic is everywhere here. I mean, a lot of us went to UMass, we've lived in this area, we really respect the efforts here. And what's interesting is that for such an important civic space in the, in the heart of the city, this is the thing to us as a landscape architect coming in that stands out the most as a visible environmental ethic. So that's just something to talk about that, that we'd like to bring up. Um, the southern corners, the southwest corner and the southeast corner, these are also important entries into the park. We think people use them. We see people coming in and out, crossing through that back, those back alleys. And, it's an area behind the Academy of Music that is interesting because it sort of blends this, you know, public-private landscape, and you're not exactly sure where the Academy parking spaces end or where the loading dock starts and the park begins. So that's a really important place that we need to look at. 
And then as you enter the park, you can see from this edge, this, this back alley as well. And we've taken this many times and we're meeting over at you know, City Hall and we're coming into the park from this edge. And there's another view of it. So you actually have a great view line if you're coming from City Hall and then you're, you can see over to South Street, directly into the park. <laughs> when we look at the central space, it's actually interesting. It's pretty much a 50-50 split between hardscape and lawn. And it's not, there's no rhyme or reason, so to speak. I mean, the 1975 plan designed it this way, but it's interesting because when you make a decision about which way to front the benches, the benches front the plaza space, they don't front the lawn. And then that tends to lead people into a certain pattern of behavior with the park that we started to notice. People definitely tend to play on the lawn area, but then if people are sitting on the benches, it seems like the pathways and the paved areas, the expansive paved areas, become more of a circulation route through the parks. So people tend to travel through it, not necessarily stay and hang out on the, on the plaza unless there's a festival or something going on. And there's another view of it. We have a lot of trees that we know are significant and we want to take close, pay close attention to them. And then this south edge, which again is not part of the park, but it is. It's the back side of the park, if you, if you, the back door in a way. There's the staircase that comes up from the roundhouse lot, which you can see here. We have 22 feet of grade change. I mean, that's a significant amount of grade change. And the way that back side of the park is dealt with today is there's a four foot chain with fence. And it basically says, okay, that's the back edge, and you can only filter people through, you know, the um, the stairs. And there's a very large evergreen stand, and it's it's just it is what it is, and that's something that we need to study that edge carefully. And then of course the connections to the rail trail and this notion of you know people coming through the park that's green space connecting to this other green space um, asset nearby. So zooming in, in the same orientation, Main Street at the bottom, this is just a, a diagram, a simple diagram that just shows movement and this idea of how space is used. So we know that this is common, this is common, people traveling along the sidewalk. This plaza tends to feel like an extension of the sidewalk. It has a lot of life. We think that's a good thing. There's a lot of people that are always permeating from that edge. We like that liveliness. As you pass through the park, we sort of observe that this may not be an area that's used as much. It's more, like I said before, about passing through. This feels more like the open lawn as opposed to this area, which has a lot of um, shade trees, mature shade trees, some locusts, some oak, um, some maple. And then this play area back here. And this, again, is a desire line to come across like this. That's what we've observed. So there are about seven or eight catch basins in the park. And what that means is all of the water that actually sheet flows from the edges of the park goes to the middle of the park. It gets caught in these catch basins or these drain inlets and it gets piped away, eventually ends up in the Connecticut River. And so in this strange way, this park, this tiny parcel, just like all of your city streets and other areas, other impervious surfaces are connected directly to the health of the Connecticut River. And a microcosm of the health of this influences the larger system. So we have these fog rays on here. There's a low point in the middle of the park, which is why all these drainage structures exist. The dashed line means that there's something underground, piping, connecting all of these catch basins. And so the site sort of acts like a bathtub mm -hmm. and it has all of that, collects all that water inward. And we like that there's, you know, this this idea of a water collection, we're just wondering perhaps maybe it should be more visible. Uh, maybe that's something that we want to think about. Maybe that's something that reflects your values of 2014. There's a ridge here. All of that sheet flows down to the roundhouse lot. And then there actually is a high point here right in front of the Academy of Music that sheet flows across the plaza into this catch basin right on Main Street. And then just, just a small task at understanding the kinds of communities that you have on the <coughs> parcel in terms of vegetation. Shade trees here on the eastern side against Memorial Hall. Shade trees again over here. 
next to the academy. There's a beautiful large oak. It belongs more to the streetscape than to the park, but we love it. It's beautiful. Uh, mixed evergreens, again, along there. The stand on the south side. The understory canopy here of the dogwoods. And then a series of street trees that form some structure and reinforce that, that edge of Main Street. The health of all these trees and the understory and even the plants that exist on the site is something that we want to pay special attention to because we recognize how long it takes for some of these trees to mature and some of them have special meaning. We know that you've got this iconic tree that gets lit every season and that's something that we're here tonight to hear about. I mean, if there are things here that you really feel strongly about or that you think you know we need to pay special attention to, this is definitely the time when you want to write these things, call them out on the site plan. And then one last diagram about climate. What's interesting is that even though this site is surrounded on three sides basically by some kind of built form or that stand of evergreens, it tends to get a lot of sun, especially in this area. Because as the sun is traveling around, and actually, this is a shady area, but the majority of the site gets some nice sun in the afternoon and in the morning. We know that there are some winter winds that come down Main Street and come into the site, but we do have some lovely summer breezes that come through here over the evergreen stand and actually come through the site like that. So, before I get into this competition scene, are there any questions about the site analysis? or the brief overview, it's not even really an analysis, just an introduction to the site. Okay, I'll keep, I'll keep going. So this, this was the competition scheme. I'm just showing the site plan that we came up with six years ago. Main Street at the top. Sorry to jump around on you. <laughs> Main Street at the top. Academy Music Memorial Hall. Here's the brown house. So, the pattern and the banded pattern that you see was really inspired by this notion of being in the Connecticut River Valley. The Hadley Meadows, the Intervale Meadows, this ag pattern. We were trying to find some representation of you know, what it <coughs> means to live in this landscape today and what are the sort of the heritage, the cultural heritage of this area. And it's a farm, you know, it's, it, we're basically in a farm area, we're farmland, and, and we love the ag. So we feel like the patterns, we use the patterns to help create a series of spaces, a central green, some kind of a performance or a flexible gathering space here that actually was envisioned as a deck. You could show movies at the, at the side of, you know, on the facade of the Academy of Music. A woodland garden, bring that idea of, you know, the riparian or natural landscape into the city. Some people had expressed interest in having flowers or some kind of garden-esque quality. And then a series of, this is at the time where the Hilton was actually mm -hmm. part of the design scheme. And so a series of uh, planted gardens, playgrounds, gathering spaces in a, in a sort of flexible parking area entry into the site from the south side. And we saved all of the trees, all the existing trees, with the exception of the dogwoods. We actually moved those, proposed to move them mm -hmm. in this scheme. Uh, and here's that heritage. Here's that heritage iconic spruce tree. And a, and a large plaza. And we envision this as a civic space that stretches across. Right now, you've got this ramp here. That's something that wasn't part of the original design. And when the design was actually done at the turn of the century and in that 1950s plan that I showed you, this was one landscape. And I think that's something that's important to think about because all of these buildings, the historic buildings, have a fabric. And that landscape is part of that fabric. And how we tie philosophy park to the adjacent context is really important to us. So this is the site plan that you have in front of you. And what we would like to do is for the next hour, it seems like a long time, but it's going to go by fast. People should pull up to tables. And what we're going to do is um, we have three colors of markers. And this is how, this is for us so that we can record this. So please be sure to use the right color when you're doing this. And you may even want to appoint one or two people to be the scribe. If you want it all split it up and write your own, that's fine. But essentially, we're going to take 30 minutes. And we want you with the green marker to highlight, write down, circle, draw, whatever is the most, you know, easiest way to convey the good things about the park, the things that you really like, the things
things that are important to you now, the things you think should remain, the things you want to see more of. Call them out, draw it, mark it, get it down. In black, anything that needs improvement, anything you think shouldn't be there, anything you just don't like, you don't think is appropriate, it's outdated, it doesn't represent what we need right now in our community. And then in blue, things that you'd like to see, things you've seen somewhere else that you think, wow, that would be perfect in our park. We want a community garden, we want a better playground, we don't want a typical playground, we want something that represents, you know, <clears throat> something different and anything that you think isn't here that should be here. So that's the, that's the exercise. And we are going to split up and walk around and help facilitate this and, and work with you. If you have any questions at all about the site plan, um, let me just back up and just point this out so you clearly understand what this is. This is an existing condition survey. All of this that you see in this dark hatch is existing pavement. Here's your playground. All of the existing trees are there. They're called out with a name. So you know the caliper size, it might say 36 inch poplar. So that means 36 inches. That's how large the tree is, the diameter of breast height. So it gives you a sense of how large these trees are or how small they are. Um, these are the lawn areas here. There's the back of the academy music, that gravel parking area, that large oak I talked about. Um, there are some lights that are called out in these little um, symbols. Catch basins are called out. All of the memorials are called out. The brick paving here and the brick paving here. And then here's that large slope that goes down to the roundhouse lot. So, does everyone understand what they need to do? What <laughs> uh, So I'm going to leave that up so we can see it. Green is good. <coughs> Black needs help. <coughs> and blue is new. <laughs>
hold up the there you go.
new ideas or um, would be attractive lighting in the park which pulls you in off the street, maybe subtle, low, colorful, um, also water features, um, maybe there's an integration of the two, lighting and water, to get you into the park. Um, new plan that connects the street from the academy all the way down to the town hall um, as you know, one landscape element that has continuity. Um, it was just mentioned, maybe we move the bus terminal there, but bus stop there, um, to in front of Memorial Hall. That really would open up the access and invitation into the park. Um, and going through here, let's see. Oh yeah, so in this back behind the academy, um, again, it's a bit of a safety issue. Um, so, and there's also the lack of invitation and definition. So perhaps there's a fence, perhaps there's an entrance way that feels like a park. Um, the back slope right now, again, there's no bike access um, up the back slope. So maybe switchback similar to behind the Fitzwillies building. Um, the back slope vegetation could use flowers. Um, it really needs improvement with that chain link fence. And um, basically connecting that bike to the bike path and improving that whole corridor to the bike path underneath the South Street underpass. That's all I got. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't forget this. One last thing was that there was a um, suggestion to look into the Cambridge and Esplanade children's play spaces for naturalized features and wood. Is anyone benefiting from holding up the things? Are you guys seeing that, or is that yes. no, you're benefiting? Yeah. Useless. No. I'm getting it. No, useless. All right, I'll just go with that. controversial was the addition of a public bathroom. I know. We talked about charging a fee. We talked about keeping a key at a local seasonally open um, refreshment stand. Something that could double as an informational cart so that when people come to the city there's one place where somebody friendly wearing a t-shirt says this is what's going on or here are some restaurants. So you know it's a possibility of controlling access to that space but it's pretty shameful that we don't have a public bathroom and there's a playground with children. So, yeah. In City Hall there is, yeah. It'd be nice to have just a small access point close to us where the kids play and where families are. But we know it's controversial. Um, the playground, we'd love to see redesigned certainly so that there's more accessibility for um, kids with special needs or handicaps that are physical. Um, and so just adding maybe a ramp up to one of the play areas might be enough, but there's people who design these things that know much more. Um, changing which direction the bench is faced so that they make sense so that if you're a parent watching kids, it's facing the playground, not the other way. Um, and maybe not all benches, but maybe some smaller configurations where you don't feel like it's a huge expanse where you could just have one or two people seated. We'd love to see rain barrels um, for the buildings there. There's a lot of roof space. We could catch a lot of fresh water. Also means that we're not spending money necessarily watering lawns or plantings that we might come up with. It's possible. Um, we considered uh, having the park be a CSA distribution point. There's a lot of CSAs that go on in town, but it would be one place where people could pick up all of their farm shares. And signs at the bottom uh, of the staircase up from the Browns house, saying that this is the way to Pulaski, or alternately pointing people which way to the bike path, because there's not a lot of signs. Good. The water. Oh, and we really want water. Like a water feature, maybe a fountain, small stream, something along those lines. <laughs> I mean, we really designed Central Park over there, so anything could happen. Great. 
that there's a public process fantastic. Um, I'm not going to repeat too much, maybe just to reinforce ideas. I guess I'll start with the comment about the, the um, tree, the large, I guess it's spruce, called Christmas tree. Get out he of thought the that line. What? Can, can you get all that stuff that's on that screen? We thought that just pruning the lower branches would stop it from being a, a visual block, and something people can hide behind and feel more open. It would be a simple thing to do, so at least cost. Um, but first, I'd like to say that I think there's an opportunity here, because I know in the, in the original presentation you said the back wall is what it is. Well, it's going to be something else. And so that's really an important thought. And so we thought that this design process could be the beginning of improving the design process of yeah. what's going to happen out here in the parking lot. And um, I know there was a, a Northampton Design Forum which came from the hotel design which was bothering a lot of people. And so out of that process came the idea of the heart of Northampton which was to take Blasky Park, or a result of it was to take Plesky Park and triple its size. Take the park, move it out over the, 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 the site of the roundhouse, possibly the roof of a parking garage, probably get some shops in there, the back of the apartments, which is a story and a half of nothing before the decks start, so that you could bring people from this park around whatever happens here, and over the top possibly, or just around it, onto a much, a much larger park in the jungle, on the other side of the parking lot, is the, the back of Old South Street, where the Mill River could happen. Now, the Mill River restoration is a future project, which could be an Army Corps of Engineers flood control project, and also bring water into the heart of Northampton. So, the, again, just to get back, and not to go too much into that, but so that the connections on each side of this lot I know when we did our design in this competition back then, we had wheelchair ramps, 12 to 1 ramps, that were bicycles and wheelchairs, both corners to switch back and stairs. So basically you could connect people from the lower grade up to the park in both corners. That could happen, or it was a design by an architect util where they actually had a, a berm of earth. So the idea being to connect whatever happens here to these two corners to the world beyond. And then, and <coughs> excuse me, all parks could be connected, kind of like what Olmsted did by connecting parks. I don't know if people did that wonderful presentation. Um, the other thing we had in design was to put a pond in the middle, basically an oval lawn or a shape of a, a lawn, and then all you do is turn a bow when it's raining, and then it turns into a pond, and then you have ice skating. Yay! And I was just. <laughs> One of our members said there used to be ice skating rinks all over Northampton. They would open up the yep. fire hydrants and yep. flood areas. Yep. And so you wouldn't even have to waste water. You could just turn off the drainage system. So basically, it could be a lawn, a pond, and ice. And probably with our winters the way they are, it would probably go from ice to pond to ice to pond. But the point <laughs> is, we would have you know, a use in the middle of the park. I guess what else we had? Oh, you know, the, the, the bus station really needs to be part of the park. It's cut off now. It creates a us versus them. They, they're crowded people. They should feel like they're part of the park. And, um, you know, not have any places where people can hide at night. And just so you feel like eyes are everywhere and you can sit down anywhere and walk anywhere. Again, the place, place structure, we have those same thoughts everybody had. Um, what else? Um, Circulation into the memorial, in front of the memorial hall. Um, excuse me? Oh, yeah. General Pulaski then <laughs> might find a new spot to watch the world go by. And um, I guess, oh, and it, it keep as many trees as possible. I mean, goodness, I don't see any reason. I mean, I know that in the hotel design, all of this got decimated and replanted, but I don't know, I'm not an expert on trees, so, but again, keeping trees versus knocking them down and planting them again. Uh, what else? The, the great idea that um, the architects who won this, having performance against the Academy of Music, yeah. a big blank brick wall, be wonderful to have a bandstand there, and performance, and it wouldn't have to be loud, you know, just, uh, just turn off, just make it acoustic. No, uh, 
No electricity. Um, Screen off the ugly part of the building, of the academy there. We talked about. Oh, yeah. In other words, well, yeah. So again, they had a deck there. There could be things done to make that flank wall look better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But and function. And then cafe we've got. If it's a deck, you could have seating and um, um, you know plenty of big coffee places to get across the street. So could hang out there. You know. Mm -hmm. How do you coffee. make the blank wall function? Hmm. How do you make the blank wall functional? Well, you project movies on it, uh, bounce sound off it for the uh, for the performances. Um, you know, what other functions? There's a fire stick there, which you can't deal with. Mm -hmm. And the living wall. Mm -hmm. Living wall system up there. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> uh, I think we're I think we covered all our stuff, thank right? You. Okay, thank you. playground there and then you can project the breeze over it. Um, parents will be looking at both. But in any case, uh, other things that we like about the park, can I ditch the microphone? I think I can talk loud enough. Sure. I gotta get closer. So other things that we like about the park um, are the fact that there are gorgeous trees and we want to keep as many of them as we can. There's great shade over here. And uh, the, it's hard to read upside down. There's a lot of controversy about the iconic tree. Um, it's cir circled in green and in black here. Um, <laughs> because we, uh, we like the fact that it's iconic, but maybe there's a better place to have an iconic tree. Um, for, for some of the reasons they talked about is that it is one more um, way that you impede the view of the entry of the park. And I think someone mentioned too that you, it just looks like a bus stop when you drive by. You don't yeah. really know that there's a park behind there that's public usable space. So, um, is, what's the next category? Needs improvement. So we have a number of notes there, um, which is why we're all here, obviously. So along the back wall, um, it's really a no man's land. I, my family uses the playground a lot with small kids, but this back area, and in fact, I think the map is incorrect. There actually isn't a sidewalk that walks around back here anymore. But that whole area is just really underutilized because it looks terrible and it's you know can be used for shopping carts and things like that these days. So obviously whatever we can do to overlap with the redesign that's envisioned whenever, that's going to happen back here. I love the idea of replacing these terrible stairs with some kind of switchback that makes it more usable for everyone and all their modes of transportation, including bikes. And um, one other thing that was mentioned too is it's the, this loading area behind the Academy of Music is really dangerous in the winter and also isn't it, it isn't very clear that that's a loading area and how do we separate that from the park in a, in a visually appealing way. And um, again, oh, the bench orientation, someone mentioned that too, in that we just need to be more mindful about the direction that the benches face. Um, as a parent, I want to face the playground, obviously. And um, did I miss anything? Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, we really liked that in, in the plan that was up there is to, to open this up and make it more visually a gateway to the park. And that these trees, although they're lovely, they do block that entry view. Um, one concern that came up with removing those is the wind tunnel effect that does come down Route 9, mostly in the winter. So maybe we plant the trees in a different orientation somehow. I, I'll leave that to the experts. But, but that is a concern if you want to use the park year-round. Uh, let's see. What's that? Oh, thank you. Yes. So uh, it, it wasn't a marker. That's why I missed it. So um, this right here, we like the idea of this being a versatile staging area. 
And it doesn't even have to be some kind of structure that you envision when you think of a stage, but something that's multi-use and would be used by people who use the park even if there's not a performance on it at the time. And we like that idea of being able to use the wall of the academy for something like uh, movies or a backdrop for performances. Um, the lighting. The lighting at night is really creepy and weird. Um, kind of that orangey. Uh, so anyway, improving the lighting in general and also just making it feel like a safer place that you want to be after dark. And, um, and maintenance, yes, making sure that whatever, you know, we design the park that it's easy and affordable as can be for the city to maintain so it continues to look nice and be a nice place. Um, Reevaluating, and I think you mentioned this too, is evaluating all the trees for health so we're not organizing and orienting our plans around trees that may be near the end of their lifespan. Um, let's see, more benches. I think that's, that's basically it for that. And um, so you, you would talk some more about if, there's a, if there might be a way to get access to some of this property back here. You want to do the square off the bottom so that the, the park would take a rectangle instead of that odd angle. That came up in the redevelopment of the, of the parking lot area. There's some way to move it so that, the, that comes down, swivels down the platform. Mm -hmm. Integrated, mm -hmm. yeah. Get the park over and integrates it better into the two sites. There's still a lot of debate about what's going on in that. That's a real yucky part of the Crosswalk on Moose Street and what that end result is going to be. 
uh, people see it as an important gateway into the park, and other people saw it as a hazardous uh, crosswalk also. Our group got very busy with the pants. Um, our concept was to try to look at how different parts of the park would function and to delineate what would be a civic space, like a plaza where various kinds of ceremonies, performances, activities could happen, what would be a performance space and seating where people could sit perhaps on a lawn, where would be the play space. And so we thought in blobs. First of all, this is Main Street. We wanted a unified streetscape along here so that the front of the park included the front of the Academy of Music and this area visually. Uh, we thought that a civic plaza belonged somewhere in this general area, and we have two members of the Pulaski Society on our, our team at our table, and they're very concerned about the ceremonial function of this park. Um, the Pulaski statue is right here. It's been moved once before. It used to be elsewhere in the park. Uh, we're not firmly set that it has to stay here, but we felt that we needed to respect that this is Pulaski Park and the Pulaski Society does use this for ceremonial purposes. We felt that this civic plaza is impeded by the dogwoods, the bus stop, the bike racks, all this hard structure um, keeps this from being a, a unified open space. So we would like to see those functions move. I think other t tables had said the same thing, move the bus stop, move your, um, your bike racks and so on, so that this can become a really nifty plaza. Um, we also liked the idea of the performance, some kind of performance function over here against the Academy of Music, um, possibly cited so that you can look into the plaza. Uh, one of the things that the Pulaski Society people said is we need reliable electrical outlets because there are times when people have to use microphones and we figured you could get wired into the Academy of Music. Um, we like the idea of if this is plaza, then the rest of this is grass. There would have to be some kind of pathway oriented this way, some kind of pathway oriented this way. We're not delineating how that happens, but the fact you have to get from here to here and from here to here. We like the idea that was in one of the concepts of a woodland garden, perhaps with native, native species, which would be hardy to the area, integrated with a sort of natural style playground, so that this all works as family friendly. Um, we also had concerns about this area down here, the slope, which we called the mess. Um, we, I think there have been some great ideas about putting in um, um, access on the slope. We didn't bring that up. We thought that it should be terraced or somehow made into an attractive space. I think some of the other groups took that much further. Um, we wanted to make sure that this space serves the different functions as well as possible, knowing that each function is distinct. In other words, you need a paved place, you need a grassy place, you need a play place. Where are those different functions going to happen? Um, we loved the idea of the ice skating. Um, we loved the idea of protecting the donated trees. Some of these trees are donated, and we felt that they should be identified so that we know we're not about to whack down something that somebody in the community donated to the park. Um, and um, apparently there's a list at Forbes Library on the trees, and I think we have caught uh, that. I think that's the, the sum total. Of it. Yes. We have suggested a small fountain. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. a water feature here. Um, a lot of other groups have talked about capturing rainwater, or whatever. Um, we felt that on access to your civic space, if you had a water feature down here, it pulls people back because people are attracted to water. Mm -hmm. So that was a concept. Again, next to the playground, somehow it might end up being the kind of water feature the kids can walk into in the summer and there's a 
water shooting up and the kids get soaking wet. Pardon? Uh, we moved it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the home and Tree, we're, we're not very fond of the holiday tree because we think it impedes the use of the civic space. Um, so that could be moved, but um, we weren't fond of that. <laughs> but it is iconic. <laughs> and there would be outrage if it meeting I've ever been to. We've done a lot. <laughs> really wonderful. Um, I want to end with an exercise that we call beauty pageant. We don't do this all the time, but we thought that you might be the right crowd for this. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Um, we basically have pulled a series of images and they relate to different types of landscapes. Well, the first is called Civic and it is showing a, a range of um, images that might be an open green, movable tables and chairs, some of the things you've, act you've actually already talked about. Can you turn down my light? It's hard to see that. Yeah, can someone hit the light, please? Okay, so there you go. So each of these categories, and there are many other categories, but we pulled four that we thought were important for this first meeting. So the first is civic, green space, um, curving paths, um, how much green space versus how much pavement. Um, the idea of a, a terrace with gathering spaces, a plaza. Outdoor movies. Uh, this is a pop-up restaurant. Uh, in some kind of um, you know, amphitheater performance space or deck. This category is called landscape. This is really about built form, planted form. It might be types of landscapes, you know, a woodland garden, um, planted, you know, flowering garden long grasses, stormwater gardens, rain gardens, and then very strong planted form, granular paths, um, just something different and different ideas. Play is another category. Different types of play, natural play people were talking about, um, conventional play, logs, you name it. And then this idea of sustainability, how to make sustainability visible. Is it something that is done through the form of a, you know, a bioswale or stormwater garden? Is it something, you know, some kind of a green roof system, community gardens, wind power? You're already doing this. You're recycling and solar compaction. Uh, rentable bikes. A green wall, and then again, solar power, which can be used to power lights. So what we've done is up here, uh, we've got all of these on long, six-foot-long sheets, and what we'd like you to do. Someone has carefully organized all of these pens, so thank you so much for doing that. Because that's exactly what I need. So what we'd like you to do, I know it's a little bit of a, um, what do you call it, when it's like a shoot here, <laughs> a cattle shoot up here, but if you could take a pen, it doesn't matter what color, and we want you to just literally mark. We're going to tally. If you like it, put a tally underneath it. So one, two, three, four, and then a cross. If you're the fifth person, draw the cross across. What we're going to do is rank these. So when we come back at the next meeting, we're going to say to you, these were your top ten images. Here are the ones you kind of liked. Here are the ones that you just didn't like at all. So as a group, it's kind of a fun exercise just to test the threshold. How many, how many should we pick? So you can pick as many as you want. If you like them all, you can go through and, and pick them all. If you find you only like five or six or you think maybe there's I think the way to qualify it is, is there something in each of these images that you think could be brought to the park? Or is there something you just think isn't quite appropriate? So it's, it's a way to quantify it, but it's also a graphic exercise. So. so in other words, what we're looking for is what could actually be used in this park. It's not whether we like rose trees, it's whether exactly. the row of trees Do you think it's appropriate at Palafra Park? Exactly. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So that that would be the short. Sure, Are you taking any more suggestions? Or <laughs> <laughs> if, we def if you have another suggestion, please write it down. But sure. 
to write it down here. It's, it's oh. kind of lengthy. <laughs> Basically, what happens is uh, I, I don't know how to design a park. I don't know where to put things or whether there should be waterfalls or whatever. But one thing that I know about a park that, that should be true in any case is that it has to be well maintained. And what I'd like to do is suggest that you put the maintenance of the park in the plan. Mm -hmm. And there may be a number of ways to do it, but what I would suggest is that you you check. I, I guess the DPW is going to take care of the park? We currently do. So whoever's going to take care of the park, have them list how many man hours and money they can spend on an annual basis and use that as a requirement for building the park so that you can make sure that it always looks good. Because you can make a beautiful park with all sorts of stuff, but if it isn't maintained, you've got a problem. So it should be put into the design somehow so that it's constantly maintained. And that's one way to do it. I'm not a park person, so I don't know how to do it, but I suggest you put it into the design so that the park is always maintained. Thank you. That's very well said. It's too much to write down. <laughs> Fred, I've heard that before from you, so <laughs> duly noted, we appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. One other, one other follow-up uh, comment to, uh, to what Fred just said. If people have additional comments uh, and thoughts that they want to send along, um, things that, you, that come to mind after you leave tonight, please feel free to get a hold of me, Jim Laurel, at the Public Works Department. You can send me an email, give me a phone call. I'd be happy to talk to you about any of the thoughts that you have about the park. So, um, on to the beauty. Could you tell us when the next meeting is? The next meeting, yes I can, hold on. May 22nd is the next one. June 26th. We're going to be presenting design schemes that are based on your input tonight. You have May, May 22nd and then the final one for schematic design is June 26th. June 26th is the last meeting. What's the amount of money that um, is available to do this? Does anyone know? Well, the, the budget for the project is somewhere on the order of $1.5 million, and that was based on um, the, the design competition um, proposal that Stimson put together. Uh, so that's the number that we're carrying at this point. We're still working on funding sources and grant applications to try to make that a reality, but that's that's the number we're working in that order. What, what if we don't get that grant? There's isn't there a grant? Yeah, there's a, there's a variety of grants that we're looking 